So I'm told now that we have Elijah Westbrook. Elijah Westbrook. Hey, look at this. Wow, we are messing around. So Elijah, first off, where were you and did you feel it? I, I sure did, John. Good morning to you. Right now, we are live in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, we were sent out here on an unrelated story. And as I walked inside uh, one of the buildings and then got into my car, uh, the car started shaking. It started swaying. And at first, I thought it was just the wind was blowing because it did feel a little windy out here. Uh, you know, when you get those normally strong gusts of wind, next thing I know, I see emails and text messages coming in from some startled folks saying, did you feel that? Did you feel that? And someone who actually did feel that is Jill here. She's a student at Rutgers University. Jill, thank you so much for uh, being live on the show right now to talk about this earthquake. It was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. What did you experience moments ago? So I was laying in my bed and my whole apartment building just started shaking. Mm -hmm. And I freaked out. I was like, what's happening? I yeah. didn't, I've never felt an earthquake before in my life. So it was very scary. The whole, my whole bed shook, everything shook. Wow. Wow. And, and, and what, would, what were you thinking when that was going on? I mean, did you think earthquake at first? No, I thought I was in a dream, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was real. Yeah, it's, it's definitely quite startling. And like I said, uh, just moments ago, I was sitting inside the news truck and the truck started swaying. I thought it was uh, gusts of wind. Uh, apparently, uh, I guess the, and, and John, correct me if I'm wrong here, the, the proper terminology uh, for the magnitude, I know it was a 4.8 and it was felt, I believe, in Lebanon, New Jersey. I guess that was the epicenter, yes, uh, essentially. Right. And again, correct me if I'm wrong no, on the terminology. Okay, so 4.8 in Lebanon, New Jersey. Lebanon. Now, the mm -hmm. next thing we're going to have to worry about is how deep was it? And you, we talk about primary waves, secondary waves. But, uh, right. so... Elijah, everybody's talking about it, right? Everywhere you go, I mean, people, it, it's Everyone it's is talking about it, including Jill, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's very, you know, startling. Um, so what, what are your friends saying? What are other people saying about what they experienced? Um, my whole family group chat actually was blowing up my phone saying, what was that? Was that an earthquake? Then my friend from Delaware texted me and said that she felt it too. Everyone was feeling it. Yeah. And everyone was like, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> so it's not just here in New Jersey. Of course, portions of New York uh, State, uh, New York City. Uh, we're also getting reports people in Pennsylvania and I believe Massachusetts possibly may have felt that. So we're, we're looking at at least the Northeast uh, corridor, if you will, here. Uh, Jill, thank you so much. If we can just have you on standby uh, yeah, just sure. in this area until uh, we get back to you. But uh, John and everyone else uh, watching at home right now, yeah, certainly some startling moments out here in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Again, uh, we were out here covering an unrelated story. Uh, I walked inside of a building, came back out, got in the car to write my script for uh, a story airing at noon. Next thing I know, the car started shaking. I'm seeing some of the park cars ahead of me uh, swaying back and forth. I thought it was just gusts of wind uh, passing through. So certainly some startling moments in this area and something that we normally don't experience, especially here on the East so Coast. So I'm going to, of course, try to... The car was actually shaking? It, it was. It was. I mean, nothing too aggressively, but enough to get your attention, if, if that makes sense. And then as I looked out the window, I saw a couple of cars that were parked on the same side of the street moving just a wow. bit. So I knew something had to be going on. Next thing I know, I see text messages rolling in, yeah, emails, sure. people asking, did you feel that? So very, very startling. Well, Elijah, thank you. I'm going to be joined by with Mary Kelvey here. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work. And hey, Mary, we're actually in Hillside. Uh, we're at the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. We were in the middle of an interview about a packathon that's happening here, and then the camera started to shake. Al Lesnar, who's behind the camera right now, was like, is that is that an earthquake happening? So I just want to bring you in because I was in the middle of an interview with Adam here. So Adam, what were you thinking? You know, I had a spinal cord injury, so my legs always shake all the time. But when I looked around, I saw all the people kind of shaking a little bit. I said, what's going on? But I didn't feel it too much, but I just kind of assumed it was just me being me, shaking around. And we've got, I don't know if you can see, but there's kind of a party at this packathon going on behind us. So we actually just thought that there was so much action and activity and boxes and food moving that that's what we thought it was. Yeah, and then I started, I felt my phone buzzing when we were talking. I live in South Jersey about an hour and a half away from here. And when I looked at my phone, my wife said, are you okay? I had no idea what was going on, but she felt it all the way down there in South Jersey. Wow, so she felt it too. And so did, so Wendy right next to you here was actually recording our interview on her phone. And then what did you say and feel? Well, I was videoing Adam. I was like, okay, my phone shouldn't be shaking the ground. 
around. I've been here a lot, and I we're moving a lot of food, but is that this much food that could move this place? But it was really crazy. Right. We thought maybe there was a huge delivery truck coming by or something like that. <laughs> no idea. And then all of a sudden, we realized, well, when I looked at Alan and I realized he's looking around, he's like, there was an earthquake. I was like, oh, my God. And then what about your phone has also, you've been getting a lot of text messages. Like 50 text messages after we finished interviewing, and I, I realized, yes, everyone felt it everywhere. And then meanwhile, Jay, and we've got a whole line of people here who experienced it, he was also standing by and saw the building, the pipes kind of shaking. Describe what you saw. Yeah, you know, the ground started shaking, but I was thinking the same thing. Is there a truck or is there something going on in the warehouse? And then you could see the pipes in the warehouse shaking and swaying back and forth. Um, it was kind of unreal. Um, and my wife had texted me, and she had said that it, her our house was shaking for like 10 to 20 seconds. So while this it was short for us, it was way longer for for her um, and my kids. Wow, yeah, and I guess I just was standing here just thinking this is the usual activity here because so much food is moving at the food bank. And we also added Justin to our lineup of, of witnesses here of this earthquake. Uh, what about you? What did you see and feel? Uh, I honestly thought it was just like a forklift that hit something because I was on the phone with my partner at work and he said all of a sudden the building started to shake. And I looked around, everyone was freaking out. So <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Well, it was a certainly experience that all of us felt over here and uh, that just describes the kind of action that's happening here at the food bank, that this is the kind of, of movement that we've been experiencing over here. So we were actually just saying they've got the 24-hour packathon shirts, and now they're going to have to update them to the We Survived the 2024 Earthquake Packathon t-shirts. <laughs> All right, let's go to Errol Barnett, uh, who is also joining us uh, on the telephone. He's in Brooklyn. So Errol, we were saying, as much as we love you, we, we thought, well, we can report what we felt the same way that Errol can report, because you're just in Brooklyn. Were you, in, were you at home? Were, were you outdoors? Where were you when this happened? Yeah, this is interesting, Vlad and Anne Marie. This is the type of earthquake that has a lot of people saying the same kind of expression. What the heck was that? And so while, yes, I felt the earthquake while at home here in Brooklyn, my wife actually, I was in the home office. She was working from the living room, ran into me and said, what the heck was that? Did you feel that? And I've, I've listened to both of you kind of describe it as, well, geez, it, it, at a 4.8 magnitude, which is this preliminary level the USGS now is saying was the strength, it almost feels like heavy traffic moving right next to you. And, you know, we're in a populated part of Brooklyn, so I dismissed it. But when she ran in, she said, I felt the room shake, the couch is moving all over the place. And for her, it was a lamp on the table. She said, and I could see the lamp moving back and forth. As I was running out um, to join you live, I'm at the Brooklyn Bridge at the moment. If you guys see the live shot, um, perhaps you'll be able to see where I am. But it is very much life as normal with tourists here. I was speaking with uh, the concierge in my building, and she was kind of giddy and giggling and, and speaking about how she was questioning how long it would last. So it's the type of thing that I don't think frightened people, but it was strong enough to be felt throughout Brooklyn. You guys have mentioned our colleague, saying they felt it as far as Pennsylvania, some people in New Hampshire that felt this quake. Um, so for many people here in Brooklyn, it just was a surprise. Everyone's asking, what the heck was that? And quakes do happen in this region of the country, just not very frequently. So I felt it. We all felt the world move for a moment. But, you know, tourists are still walking around Brooklyn Bridge Park. And uh, life is certainly continuing as normal. But a bit of a blip and a what the heck was that? <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think region. one of the things that's interesting if we, because what we're going to hear over the next, you know, 12 to 24 hours is everybody talking about where they were yeah. and what they felt, yeah. right? But it, yeah. I suspect that I was just texting with my sister-in-law and brother-in-law who live out in the Bay Area in California. And if you are in a part of the country where aftershocks or small earthquakes are commonplace, everybody... It's, it's a normal thing. It's yeah. a normal part of life. In New York City, although it's not, uh, it's not common, it's not unprecedented yeah. to have earthquakes. I mean, Chris Van Cleve mentioned the earthquake uh, that uh, some experienced a few years back in Washington, D.C. So I think why the New York media here, us at CBS News, we're talking about it, um, even though so far it's been no damage reported other than delays in, in transportation, everything seems to be okay. Um, it's that we're not used to this. This mm -hmm. is not common. So even for some of us who have uh, experienced real earthquakes, even I, for the first 
10 seconds, I was looking at you like, yeah. what is that? Yeah. You know, what is that? And yeah. then all of a sudden when it kept going, yeah. I was like this. My first thought was it's some kind of a truck. My second thought was there's some kind of nefarious act happening. Mm, I did think for a second really? there's something going on that's not normal. Yeah. And then within 10 or 12 seconds, I thought this is an earthquake. Yeah. And then I was like, my flight or fight like yeah, kicked in. Yeah. And I was like, am I going to head out the door? Because what I was saying to Anne-Marie, when I was in Haiti um, in the day after the earthquake, the big earthquake in 2010, you felt aftershocks exactly like that. Mm. And you knew because the buildings there are not sturdy mm -hmm. that you had to get out. And so every time that happened, and that would happen several times throughout the day and night, you'd race for the door and try right. to get outside, especially, you know, given the destruction that you saw in the actual earthquake. Yeah. So that was my first thing. I'm like, I'm getting out of here. No, well, I can imagine if you have actually experienced an earthquake or experienced what you've experienced, this could be very unnerving. Yeah. For me, it was sort of a, a curiosity, yeah. but I can totally get why, you know, y you would be out of the building and I would be still in here <laughs> looking up at the <laughs> ceiling. Why, 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 why things are shaking. Yeah. Right, right. Um, <laughs> while we continue to talk to you, we just wanted to show some video that we just have into the newsroom while we're discussing all of this. This is from inside the United Nations. A Security Council meeting was underway when the earthquake hit, and there was some shaking that was happening. It was caught on video, and we're going to take a look at some of this as we continue to talk to you. So here we are. We're inside the United Nations Security Council meeting, and we want to see the expressions on their face. Everybody says, what in the world's going on? I don't see a whole lot of There's shaking. There's just Do you, some Mary? vibrations there that we are taking a look at. I did see some movement, uh, not extreme as Ooh, we I were see. looking at, but you see a little bit of that. Compare uh, that, just, though, to the, the video out of the uh, uh, Taiwan television station that was on when that 7.8 hit. That, I mean, look at the difference. Look at the, the, the magnitude of difference. But that is interesting. I wonder what they were thinking about when that hit. Mm -hmm. Of course. I mean, that was a big question. And doctor, we were talking to um, our Dan Rice, who said he got out of his house because he was so concerned. I mean, is that what you would suggest people do? I'm sorry, I didn't uh, hear the last question to, to go outside. Or yeah, if, if you're inside a house or a building and you feel shaking, I mean, what would you advise people to do? Um, uh, the same thing that I was being trained since I was raised in Greece in a, a high tectonic active area is to stay calm, stay far away from windows because they break, far away from walls because they also break, and stay uh, under a table close to one of the four legs of the table, not at the center of the table. Always at the edges of the table and being under the shade of, of the table. So to be protected by any heavy object that may fall uh, on you. Uh, we shouldn't run, we should uh, wait. And depending on the situation, um, some people they run, that is true, but most of the people they get injured because you cannot run when the ground shakes. That's mm. right, that's right. Doctor, this is such good information. We also have some uh, video from a story at Queen. Someone captured the shaking inside their apartment, and we saw a bar cart, you know, really shaking as the tremors were being felt throughout the city. Of course, um, as we take a look at it here. You know, it's yeah. interesting because some people were saying it felt like a train was going by when you kind were talking of, to Maurice like Dubois. Yeah. Were, wasn't he saying he thought a train was going by, but he doesn't have a train line right next to, to his place. So there you go. I mean, I think that is a real good, I mean, that's it. Yeah. That's what we were feeling. You know, that shaking, that vibration, it didn't last long, but we all knew something wrong <laughs> was I mean, going is, on, yes. It is hard to capture video. I was in an earthquake in San Diego once, and I thought, well, the best place to show it, and it lasted a long time, went to the pool, and you could see there were waves in the mm -hmm. pool mm -hmm. so it, it, it's interesting how it would manifest that was pretty smart to just get a picture of that and to hear that and that also uh, kind of reinforces this 20 second duration Certainly.